Welcome, welcome to Daily Boost. This is yours truly, Dr. Charles and different here. I want to welcome all of you that are watching me from around the world. It is Transformational Tuesday on your daily dose of your Daily Boost. So I want to welcome all of you. I hope you are having a great day. Or oh, some of you in the, the Western Europe and Africa, it's evening already. I want to welcome you. It is a great day to be alive. 
I see we have Sheena, God bless you, all gay from Denmark. And we have Chris from Davenport, Iowa. And uh, we have Don Adams, God bless you. I'm glad you all have joined me today. This is a great day with great miracles happening. I hope you're all ready for this. And we have Alex, God bless you. And we have, um, I just don't want to miss anyone, Sandra Egan, God bless you, Sandra. I'm glad you joined me. And then we have Levi, God bless you. Birgit, all of you that have joined me today, God bless all of you for joining me today. It is a great day with great possibilities. Uh, so I pray that you're ready. I want to wish a happy birthday to all of you that have a birthday today. And um, if I didn't get the note about your birthday, I just want you to know you're loved. And you are valued. You are important to me. And most importantly, you are important to God. I want you to know that Today, we're going to get into a good flow. We've been talking about the faith of the operation of God. So we're going to get started very quickly. I want you to share this with as many people as possible. I see, I see mercy. God bless you. Love you. And we have Blake. Blake, the man with the miracle sticks. Okay. Welcome on board. And we have Kevin all the way from Pennsylvania. I don't want to miss anyone. We have Mary. God bless you. And we have Sheena, God bless you. We have Hilma, all the way from Iceland. And uh, Lucy, Alma Lucy. And we have our Princess Erika, God bless you. All the way from Budapest, Hungary. God bless all of you. And we see all of you have joined me today. And we are going to be, we are going to be doing some amazing things today. I'll be sharing with you some of the things. A quick recap from yesterday. And Blake is laughing. Okay. <laughs> he knows how we talk here and we were talking about this and we have pastor lizzie welcome on board i love you hallelujah and uh, we have uh lungiswa is it lungis giswa oh, i don't want to i don't want to mess that name up but i want you to know you're loved and you are valid thank you all for joining me we've been talking about the series on making your faith work the Bible declares that great is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And the Bible says in 1 John 5 verse 4, it says, it says, this is the victory that becomes the world, even your faith. Your faith overcomes the world. We have talked about quantum leap faith, how it, faith changes from one dimension to another dimension. We've talked a bit about that. And uh, I see Ning is on. Welcome, Ning. Love you, love you, love you. I love you guys very much. Now, we're talking about, um, yesterday we started reading um, some, some wonderful scriptures. I want to go straight into it and get down to some of the nuts and bolts talking to you about the faith of the operation of God. The faith of the operation of God. I just want to make sure I have everything clear. <laughs> I was just drinking shortly before we came here, just drinking some water. I want to make sure I'm, I'm ready to go. Okay, we're good to go now. Praise God. So don't mind me, a little bit of table manners. <laughs> Rushing in here. Michelle, God bless you. I love you. <laughs> Yvonne, all the way from Montreal. God bless you. And I want to make sure everybody here is, the, is ready to go. I told you yesterday that they are treasures in you. That they are treasures in you. There's a treasure in you that needs to be discovered. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, it said, what is the glorious inheritance, his glorious inheritance in the saints? So I'm going to do a quick recap from yesterday. I want to launch out into the deep today, and I hope you're ready for me today. I want to pray that God will open up your spirit, that your receptors are ready to receive the word of God today, and I know it will be a blessing to you. You see, I cannot give you revelation. Hallelujah. I cannot give you revelation. I can only plant the seeds of revelation. Okay? I can only plant the seeds of revelation. So um, I hope you don't mind. <laughs> I had to I had to drink um, some water and um, want to make sure I am presentable before you. It's important. I respect the fact that you've come to, to join me today. Okay? Share this with people around you. 
share it with those on your list. If you have a list that you're part of, share it with them today. And that way more people can, can benefit from this. We're talking about the faith of the operation of God. And I say to you yesterday that the Bible talked about that we are called and sanctified. You are sanctified. You are sanctified. That you are endowed with God's fullness. With God's fullness. I told you that believing is a beautiful thing. Doubting, unbelief is sinking sand. I want you to know that today we are going to take you to another dimension by the Spirit of God that your faith becomes so vibrant that anything is possible. Learning to flow with the Holy Spirit, it will change everything you do. Are you ready? God bless you. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, Ning, you're so sweet. Now, let, let me get this across to you. Um, I, I say to you that you become, you have a faith that is so vibrant, it's so unshakable, that moves everything. The Bible says, if you have faith, you can say to this mountain, be moved. A faith that can move mountains. A faith that can move obstacles out of your way. That's the vibrant faith I want to talk about. The Bible says in Peter, Peter says, those that have obtained like precious faith. It is very important you are always around people that have like precious faith. You don't want to be around people that when you talk about God's faith in you, they'll look at you a little funny because they don't understand what you have and they want to diminish everything you do. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Today is a new day. Today has possibilities. Today has greatness locked up in you. Are you ready? So I see uh, more people are joining us. We want to make sure everybody is on board. Everybody's on board. The Bible declares that you, we need to understand our inheritance. We need to understand our inheritance, his inheritance in us. And I stated 2 Corinthians 4, 7, it says, For we having these treasures in earthen vessels, these treasures in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of you. That means the source of the power is of God and it's not of you. So when I am operating by faith, I am never worried about whether there's power to make it happen. I never worry about, do I have enough faith? My faith is a switch. I turn on that switch. The Bible says the law of faith. Faith is a law. If faith is a law, all I need to do is operate by that law and things begin to happen. It's very simple. Things begin to happen. So most Christians are struggling with the idea of faith. They say, well, I don't have enough faith. Or preachers might even tell you things like, you don't have enough faith. We will never say that here. When you don't have faith, thank God, faith can come. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's very simple. Faith is not a problem. You can have faith. You actually do have faith. The question is not whether you have faith. It's whether you're putting your faith into use. The size of your faith is not the key. The action of your faith is the key. The size of your faith is never the issue with God. It is what you do with a mustard seed faith that makes a whole world of difference. Do you understand what I'm talking about today? I hope you're following me today. Hallelujah. So I am talking to you today to have a better understanding of what faith is really about. God has given you his very faith. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says, It said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. He lives in me. Now it continues saying, But the life which I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son. I am living by the faith of the Son. Just like the Bible says, man does not live by bread alone. The source of what I'm eating is God's faith, at work in me and getting my thing. The Bible says, it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasures. God is at work in you, both to will and to do 
of his good pleasures. Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. Philippians 1, 6 begins, it says, For he, I am confident that he that has begun a good work in you. God has taught us something beautiful in you. And I'm here to tell you, it will always win. Your faith in God will never be disappointed. Have faith in God. Believe what God has told you. It is possible. Believe that. Hallelujah. I see Michelle. God bless you. I am very glad you joined me. Michelle, God bless you. Now, I'm talking about the simplicity of believing. The simplicity of believing like a child. As he paid your prayings, welcome on board. Hallelujah. You see, the simplicity of you believing the Word of God, it is so easy. It is so easy. But sometimes religion has a way of making everything so complicated until we think we don't have it. Maybe just a chosen people have it. No, God made it so easy that anyone can come on one basis to Him and that is the basis of only believe. Sometimes, you know, we preachers, we get into details and we get, we make it so complicated that the ordinary people maybe need a doctor of theology to figure it out. No, faith is a lot easier than that. Faith is simply just flowing with God's life in you, acting, talking, being like God in every situation. That's simply what faith is. God at work in you, but to will and to do of his beautiful pleasures. That's what I'm talking about. Once you understand that, something begins to happen. You don't have to struggle. Oh, Father, I need faith to be healed. Oh, Lord, I need... No, there is a flow of love. The flow of love is the flow of faith. It, it becomes so easy. Oh, boy, I can't wait to have you at the Power School of Miracles. The Power School, you need to register for the Power School of Miracles. It is coming from the 20th to the 26th of July. You need to register. It is called Limitless, experiencing God's limitless dimension. Limitless. You want to come to the atmosphere where you, you can hear, see, you can do anything in any dimension. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. You begin to understand that you now are flowing with God. Now, pay attention to this. Faith is never a problem when your focus is Jesus. You know, when your focus is on faith, you can have a little problem. But when the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, looking unto Jesus, when you look to Jesus, he authors your faith. When you keep looking, he grows your faith. And as you keep, keeping, you keep on keeping your eyes on him, he always completes your faith. He is the author of and the finisher so faith has a beginning and faith has an end uh, an end point and at the end of faith is the reward of faith it is the reward of faith faith is always rewarded the bible says in hebrews eleven six, he is a rewarder of them that dil diligently seek him the, the diligent ones are the ones that seek him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are, you, are you hearing me? Hallelujah. I see Marco. Welcome aboard. I love you. And Linda, all the way from, from, the, from Norway. God bless you. And we are talking about experiencing the, the fullness of what God has made available to us. The Bible says in Ephesians, God makes known his wonders through you. Ephesians 3, 9, he makes all the principles and powers to know through the church the manis, manifold wisdom or the many-sided wisdom or the multifaceted sides of wisdom of God. God's wisdom is just not one way. You can see it from different angles and getting resolved. In other words, if you want to heal the sick, the, there's not only one way of healing the sick. Hallelujah. There's so many ways God can reach out to people. And God is reaching out to you today. His outreach to you is He's telling you He loves you. He believes in you. And everything is going to be all right. You need not worry about the situations you're facing. It's only temporary. Because God is at work in you, both to will and to do of His wonderful pleasures. Hallelujah. Are you ready? So I'm going to, I'm going to take this and take it a little faster that way you can flow with me. I was reading yesterday, I said, the faith of the operation of God. 
the faith of the operation of God. So I read this yesterday. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. I mentioned to you that I'm, I'm going to read a few scriptures and then I am going to tie them all together. Let's go first of all to Colossians chapter 2 verse 12. The Bible declares, Colossians chapter 2 in verse 12. The Bible says that we were buried with him in baptism, wherein also we were reasoned with him through the faith of the operation of God. The faith of the operation of God. One other translation says, the faith of God in operation to make you like himself. The faith of God in you operating to produce. The same faith of God that he used to raise Jesus from the dead is the same faith that he has handed to you. The same faith. The faith of the operation of God. In other words, the faith to operate like God. The Bible says in Peter, it says, Whereby he has given unto us all things that pertain to life and to God likeness, godliness, godlikeness, through, it tells you, the knowledge of him. Knowledge is the most important thing a believer needs to have after you're born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, speaking in tongues, you need to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of the Son. Because the more you know him, the more you know you. As he is, so are you. For you to know how to operate here, you've got to know how he is. And that's where fellowship comes in. And you begin to flow in an unusual way. Now, let's go to Ephesians um, chapter 1. We're going to go look at verse 19. I want us to look at the scripture. Uh, and it's going to serve as very, very important point while we're going through this. Ephesians chapter 1 in verse 19. I want you to notice what it says here. The Bible declares, it says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? Remember, as the faith of the operation of God, of his power towards us. Now think about this, the great, the exceeding greatness, the power of God that is available to us is not great. It exceeds any greatness we can see. Or we can, whatever is great, what you have is exceeding greatness. The exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. His great power at work in you when you believe. Great things begin to happen when you believe. Towards us who believe. To us what? Who believe. How do we know the size of that power? The power at work in you. The Bible says, this. it says, if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. I'm talking about the faith of the operation of God. If that same spirit lives in you, that same spirit will quicken your mortal body. It will quicken. That same spirit who raised Jesus will also raise Christ from the dead, which is you and Jesus combined, and then he will also quicken your physical body. That means your body comes alive. No sickness can stay there. Your bones, your nerves, your joints, your, your everything about you, anything you touch becomes an extension of the life of deity at work in you. Are you hearing me? Something begins to happen. The Bible says, according to the working of his mighty power. Now here he is. Paul writing to the Ephesian church. He says, the power that's in you it's so glorious. This is how you can measure the size and the capability, the power, the capacity of that power. You can, what's in you is the same thing according to, it says, according to the working, the operation of God, the working of his mighty power. The greatness of his power according to the working of of his mighty power. So the greatness of that power, exceeding greatness of the power, can be compared to what happened when he raised Jesus. He wrought in Christ what he did by raising Jesus from the dead. I told you that was the greatest, 
That was the greatest move that Satan could not counteract. What was the move? The move was to make sure Jesus never came out. Was to make sure he was held down. The Bible declares in Acts chapter 2 in verse 24. It says, for it was impossible that death could hold him back. It was impossible for him to. To be held by death. I say to you. It's talking about what kind of power. If this power that's in you. Is the same as the one. That raised Jesus from the dead. You cannot be afraid of death. Death is illegal. Come after death. What is sickness? Sickness is death. Trying to reign in your body. The Bible says in Romans 5 verse 12. Just because of one man's disobedience. Sin entered into the world and death came as a result of that. Death came by sin. So sin entered, death came. Jesus came, became sin, destroyed sin in the flesh, and then sin was booted out. Death has to go out with what brought it in. What is sickness? Sickness is death trying to reign over a human body. It's trying to reign as a king of your body. That's what death tries to do. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5 verse 21. It tells you just as, as sin had reigned unto death. So my grace reigned unto righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. Grace might reign unto righteousness. Unto everlasting life. That's what I'm talking about today. So you understand the great the greatness, the great efficacy of this power available in you, how can you know the dimension of this power? The, the, the faith of the operation of this power, all you need to do, if you know how great this power is, you will want to turn on that, that switch of faith on at all times. Hallelujah. What am I saying to you? I am getting this across to you that faith is simple. Faith is easy. Faith is not stressing out. Faith is simply allowing the flow of this revelation of God's nature at work in you. I said faith is what you see. You look not at the, un at the things that are seen. You look at the unseen dimension, the evidence of the things not seen, the realities of the things not seen. That is what faith is all about. Hallelujah. Do you understand what it means? That means today in a situation you are facing the faith of God that is in you is enough to handle any mountain, any problem you're facing. I said to you yesterday that you don't look for favor. You are favor. You are born of favor. You are born of love. The one who gives favor is the one who gave it to you. Because you are born of God, the favor of God is already part of your makeup. Wherever you go, favor goes. Wherever you go, joy goes. You are the constant expression of all that God is. Do you understand that? You become the expression of God wherever you go. You become the expression of love wherever you go. That's what I'm talking about today. Do you understand what I'm talking about today? You begin to find out that things are not as difficult as they are because God's faith is at work in you. It is God who is at work in you. The operation of God. It is God who is at work in you. But to will and to do of his good qualified. Good pleasures. Hallelujah. God loves to show you off. He loves to make you look good. He loves to make you, make you look amazing. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. You are born of the God stuff. You are made of the God stuff. Hallelujah. You are of the God type. Hallelujah. Do you understand what I'm talking about today? Now, here he is, is talking about which he wrought in Christ. He wrought this in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. He set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Far above principalities and powers. You can't even compare this. It says the power in you put Jesus so far above principalities and powers. Far above. You couldn't compare that. So what are you afraid of 
the enemy, the witch doctors, the witchcraft, the witches, and all of those things. Let me tell you something. We were in Uganda, and uh, we had time. Uh, a witch doctor that told us it was a witch doctor there. We went out there, and you know what? I said, let me go and visit the witch doctor. We went up there. We sat down with the witch doctor, and he offered us some things. People are all scared. I'm not afraid of the witch doctor. Nothing can happen to me. I have a far superior power in me. Why would I be afraid? Because I have such fullness of the power. That's why I love people. Because we cannot act out in anger. We will destroy everything. Too much power. So what do we do? The best way to use the power is to become the expression of the one who is that power. So I sat down with the witch doctor. We, you know, he talked. He, you know, he was trying to act all real spiritual and you know how they, they'll put all the, the chalks and all the things on their face and they act all kind of trying to scare you. I just sat down there. All I could see was a man that Jesus paid for. Because they're trying to impress me that they're very powerful. They have their knives. They have some of their, their things, all the things around there. Those things did not move me. I wasn't impressed because the witch doctors were doing things. Well, they're precious. Jesus paid for them too. People say they're casting spell. The spell will only work if you think you have a lesser power. How can the spell work when he has set you far above, above principalities and powers and rulers and dominion? Hallelujah. Those that are in this world and in the world to come, you're so far superior. There is a far superior power according to that power that works in us who believe. Why would I ever worry about those things? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see. I see Pastor Dennis Emerjong. I love you. <laughs> we have, we are operating. I'm talking about the faith of the operation of God. We are so far superior to all of those things. The faith of the operation of God. You don't look for favor. You are born of the one who gives the favor because you're born of the one that gives the favor. Something in you attracts favor and releases favor. So we were, we were, this is about 20 years ago and I sat down with the witch doctors and they're talking and they tried to do this and they tried to do that. I just smiled and I just said, you're precious to God. And the man looked at me, you know, they tried to intimidate you. And uh, I just smiled and I said, oh, you're precious. And the man, he, I said, I came here because the one who made you sent me to you to tell you your, your mistakes are forgiven. The man looked shocked. Mortals, when mortals hear the statement, your sins are forgiven you. It sends a shock to their system to know Oh, you mean I don't have to carry guilt anymore? You mean all the mistakes, all the things I've done, I've hidden away from people. God knows and he forgives me. What a lifting of burden that is. Not guilty. I say to him, God sent me to you to tell you he loves you. And every mistake you've ever made has been canceled. He looked at me, his bloodshot eyes looking at me, just looking at me, all of a sudden, it began to kind of glaze over. You could see tears just running down his cheeks. I said, you're forgiven. I said, I didn't come to condemn you. I said, the people might condemn you. That is not my mission. I've come to let you know you are loved. You are valued. It doesn't matter what people think of you. All that matters is what God thinks of you. And the man, now I was told that this man controlled the, the whole area with witchcraft. He had bewitched the people. And that night, that was the night we had people that were pregnant for six years. Some, some of them pregnant for five years. Some of them pregnant for 13 years with one pregnancy, witchcraft. He held sway in that area that night, one after another. Some of them say they've been the 17 years under the witch doctor's care and they have been tormented for 17 years and in one moment that whole area was delivered by love simple humans want to know am i free freedom is so sweet it's so wonderful when people are oppressed that that makes god feel i never made you for that I, you were made for freedom you were made for love you were made for life and wow when the faith 
of God comes into a place, it begins to operate, operate, and you hear, he says, he set me, he sent me to set at liberty those that are bruised, to tell the captives, you are free, you are free. That's our message. When we come to a community, we are not fighting anybody. We're not fighting that group. We're not fighting the Muslims. We're not fighting anybody. We come with good news to deliver to the people your sins are forgiven you. What words, what simplicity. We are operating by the faith of God. Hallelujah. We are operating. I see Pastor Dennis. Hallelujah. When you understand this, it changes it. I'll, I go to places. I want to go to the Muslim Imam that's in charge of the whole community. That's the first place I want to go to. I want to go and just respect him because he is a leader in the community. I'm not going there to fight him. I'm going there to love on him. Take some gifts. And I said, I've come with good news. You are loved. I want to go to the worst gang member, the one that they claim their gods or they claim all this kind of thing ah it doesn't matter it doesn't matter to me all i come i come in his name and i come there and when we go there love is expressed the faith of the operation of god what kind of faith is in me the bible says in ephesians chapter one it says i said what is the exceeding greatness it exceeds greatness the power at work in us exceeds greatness hallelujah it exceeds greatness hallelujah you see let me tell you there is nothing anybody can prophesy against me no curse that they can say against me that would even affect me because i am coming from a different dimension it might affect humans it cannot affect those that are born of god it cannot touch us. They can say whatever they want to say. They can disparage you in the, in the newspaper. You are coming from a different place. You are not human. It would affect all the humans, not you. That is born of God. You're coming with a mindset like God. You're coming with a lifestyle like God. Loving the people. Even when the people are speaking ill of you, you just smile and say, don't worry about it. They just don't know me. When they know me, they'll love me. To know you is to love you. If, they would, if you would know the you that God knows, you will love the you that God loves. And they, those people will love the you that God loves that you're expressing out. I never take anything personal. When people would lie about me, that's normal. That's what liars do, the lie. So what do I do? No, I love on them. That is my normal default. Let love flow. And when love is flowing, faith is unstoppable. When love is flowing, faith is is unstoppable hallelujah you find out the faith of the operation of god hallelujah you begin to understand there is a flow a higher dimension it's not the one who yells the loudest it's not the one that dances around makes a, the biggest noise it's the one that can love the most has the greatest power the most because that means god now is expressed in a touch and a voice and a smile and a, and a hug something so beautiful when god has taken over a human body to live in that body and to be fully expressed by that human body the faith of the exp of the the faith of the operation of god what happened when jesus was raised from the dead something happened something happened it's not just he was raised from the dead. I said to you yesterday, I said, faith is the revelation of who God has become in you. God at work in me. Faith is a revelation of who he has become in me. God at work in me. Ephesians 3.19, to be feel full with all the fullness of God. To be so full of God, every thought, every word you speak, every action you take is God expressed. When you're talking to your husband or to your wife, you're talking to your friends, you, God comes out of you in such a loving way. Even you tell them, hey, how are you today? They feel God fully in you. You go out to eat, you walk into a restaurant, the people feel God. You don't have to have an interact. Walk in there, they can feel heaven invading that place. God at work in you. God at work in you. Hallelujah. I see Jesse, bless you, sweetie. I see, I see all of you wonderful ones that have joined me. Today, there is a flow, there is a life 
on the inside of us that we cannot look at things no matter where we are we can never look at things the way others look at things god is at work in us both to will and to do of his beautiful pleasures today i want to talk to you about the faith of the expression of god the faith of the operation when god is fully in operation with you and in you and something marvelous begins to happen the bible declares the bible says in we were looking at uh, the scripture yesterday from hebrew i say to you that when jesus was raised from the dead there was such power that the, the, the world has never seen. He was not raised by the power. He was raised by the glory. The glory is the highest expression of power. The glory of a, of a king is his wealth, his office, his, his uh, when you talk about the gravitas, what makes him a greater king than other kings, his glory. When the Bible says Solomon in all of his glory, that means if you can put all his everything his wisdom his wealth everything and you can put that on a scale and measure it that is the glory of solomon the same thing when it says the glory of the father it means everything that the father is everything that the father has ever used everything that god can be it's locked up in that moment when he raised jesus from the dead and the good news is when he raised him up from the dead you were raised with him by the same glory of the Father. The same glory that raised Jesus now raises you. The operation of God raised you to become exactly the expression now of that glorious presence. No wonder the Bible says that God was in Christ. Now Christ is in you, the hope of that glory. The world is waiting. The Bible says it was hidden from others, but it's now manifested. It's now manifested. I don't wait for it. I don't go and pray for it. It is manifested. I just have to become aware of it. Hebrews chapter 2. It says, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation that was first spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us who heard him? Hallelujah. They spoke about it. They confirmed it to us. I don't want to talk about it. I want to explain experience it that great salvation must become my daily living oh what glorious salvation hallelujah for salvation has become a person i don't want to hear about salvation i want to be salvation to my world hallelujah i don't want to hear about the great salvation i have to become that great salvation now you think well what is it talking about the bible tells us this is what the Lord has commanded us. I'm talking about not talking about salvation, but becoming salvation. Wherever you go, salvation goes. The life of God goes and miracles will happen because now salvation has come. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Are you with me today? Salvation. You are salvation. I don't need to pray for to be. I am salvation. You see, the Bible says that they talked about the salvation. They could not see the salvation. But then the one who is salvation, Jehovah, the one who is salvation, now gives birth. What do you think is going to give birth to? Saviors shall come out of Zion. He gives birth to salvation. He gives birth to Savior. The one who is salvation gives birth to salvation. We are now become salvation to our world. Let me give you some scripture. Acts 13 verse 47. It said, this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you to be, not to preach. To be a light to the nation and to be salvation. Hallelujah. To be salvation, not to preach it. To be the salvation that was preached. You become the salvation of the world. Hallelujah. I got up this morning and I began to think. I said, I am his hope. I am God's hope for my world. I cannot get too busy trying to collect things that I miss who I am. His hope. That's why I can't wait to go to the nations. I can't wait to go out to my world to tell them, listen, I have good news. Salvation has come and you can have it now. 
You can become what you are looking for. The salvation has appeared unto all men. That's what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. We are operating by different rules. We are operating by different rules. I, the Bible says, for he has made us salvation to the ends of the world. Savior shall come out of Zion. We are coming with a different take, a different flow, a different mindset. We are salvation. You are salvation. You are healing. You are prosperity. You are everything. The Bible says, hey, I am. You are the offspring of the great I am. Hallelujah. When you get there, solutions get there. When you get there, heaven gets there. When you get there, angels are already there waiting, hallelujah, to carry out the commands of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? The faith of the operation of God. The faith of the operation of God. When God now possesses you, all of your being, all of your thoughts, all of your actions, your heart, everything you do is God-centered, focused, going out to the world. And Jesus now has a living flesh and a human body. Hallelujah. He is at Welcome back. Welcome back. You are salvation. You're full of Jesus. Wherever you go, the fire of God goes and you are flowing with heaven. You step into the place. There is a flow that is coming out of you. I never heard people talk like this. This is what, whenever I find myself, whenever he wants to talk to me in that beautiful place, the secret place, hallelujah. Do you know, I've talked to you a little bit about a secret place, is the place where God only takes those he trusts. The secret place of the Most High is beyond heaven, hallelujah. It's beyond heaven. Heaven is not the ultimate. He is our refuge hallelujah heaven is not my refuge he is the lord is my portion the lord is my is my refuge he is in the secret place he that dwelleth in the secret place in the secret place you can see those kind of things you can think like this and heaven will back you up going around the nations seeing the witch doctors I went, we went in Mongolia to the Buddhist temple and the Buddhist monks are all seated there and I came with a smile and instead of talking to them and I said, I have no religion for you, I have life from heaven. And these Buddhist monks are sitting there just looking at me and as I began to talk to them, for the first time, some of them realized God is real. They felt the presence. They felt the tangibility of God in that place. Hallelujah. There was a tangibility. Faith is the tangibility of God's living presence, of his power, and of his purpose in you. Hallelujah. In you. The substance. The substance. The tangibility of God coming into a place to make things Aligned to his dreams. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? I'm talking about the Bible says you become salvation. The, the Bible declares in Hebrews chapter 2. They preach about a salvation. They preach about a salvation. God does not want you to preach about a salvation. It's to become what others have been prophesying. You now become the tangibility of love. When you're speaking to people, life flows out of you. And miracles happen because now salvation has come. Hallelujah. Jesus, he, he made a man called uh, Zacchaeus, he was up on the tree, and of course, you know the story of Zacchaeus. Something amazing began to happen. Zacchaeus had an idea. He, he went up and hit up because we, we told him he was a little man, he was up there, but maybe because he was scared of the people. And everyone is lining up on the street talking about Jesus, so excited about Jesus, and Mr. Zacchaeus thinking nobody liked him. Hallelujah. Sometimes people feel like that. A witch doctor might feel like that. They, the, the, gang, the gang leader might feel like that. He feels okay. His soul is sold to the devil. Or some people that feel that they, that they cannot get away from, from the clutches of the enemy. They feel that they're caught, caught up. They're feeling it. 
absolute despondence in their area and they don't know that and that was how Zacchaeus was I mean people didn't like him maybe he was hiding away from people up in the little tree of all the people that were there Jesus walked and looked up at Zacchaeus he said Zacchaeus come down come down he said Mr. Zacchaeus I'm coming to your house for dinner I'm coming to your house I am coming to your house. Everybody hates you. No one likes you. But I do. That's the Jesus. The faith of the operation of God. And Jesus came. He said, and Zacchaeus said a saying, Oh, oh, you mean you trust me? You mean you trust me? Everybody hates me. They think I'm a cheat. They think I'm all kinds of things. And the, they, they don't think I'm a good man. But you, the great Teacher, you trust me? He said, listen, if I have ever done anything, the gospel brings out the best in people. This is a man that everybody condemned. But when Jesus showed up, this man said, if I have defrauded anyone, I'll make it right. That's what Jesus does to people. That's the operation of God. Saving you. Lifting people. That's what I'm talking about. Zacchaeus. Nobody loved him. He, was, he had nobody come to his house. And Jesus said to him, Mr. Zacchaeus, I'm coming with you. I'm coming with you. I'm coming with you. What am I saying to you? Salvation has come. Salvation has come. Hallelujah. Salvation has come. That's our mission. Not to condemn people. They have enough troubles. They don't need a preacher condemning them. They don't need, they just need Jesus in you. Jesus locked up in you. Salvation. And here was Zacchaeus. He said, if I have ever defrauded anyone, People have condemned Zacchaeus. But the man didn't say he defrauded anyone. He said, if, in case. You see how religious people have taught us over the years to say Zacchaeus had cheated people. No, he was an honest man, but people thought he was a criminal. And because of the misunderstanding of who he was, what, did, what happened? See, how can you steal one and give five? Where is the five, four coming from? He said, if I did anything, if I ever did anything wrong, I'll make it right. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. That's what the faith of the operation of God can do. It will transform the vilest person, the one that everybody has condemned, and he will bring out the best out of us. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The world needs you. Today, we, 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 we're busy about things, about what people think of us, our reputation. He made himself of no reputation. Do you care for one like you care for a million? When I speak in the crowd, I'm speaking to one. That one that maybe nobody has ever given any time to. That's Jesus. He don't speak to the crowd. We come there not because of the crowd, because somebody somewhere in the crowd needed to be believed. And Jesus believed in Zacchaeus. And he said to him, today salvation has come to you. He didn't say, I am coming to preach salvation. He says, I am salvation. I'm coming to your household. When I come to your household, Everything is okay. Salvation in a human form coming to him. We need to do that too. We need to do that. 
Today, we have people that everybody wants to be liked. I realize this. Many people have been condemned. And that's one of the things we have a mission here. I've told my team, look for pastors. Look for people that nobody wants to deal with. People that people have talked down about. They've made mistakes. Let us rescue them back and let them restore them back. And let them make them beautiful again. And let them get back to fulfilling purpose. God is not, is, is, God is not hopeless. No one is hopeless. Even the one that religious people have kicked out, they've made mistakes. Maybe you've been through a divorce. Maybe you, you've, you've killed somebody. When we come to you, we know you have enough troubles. You're just looking for a way out. And here is Jesus the way. The way out of your troubles. That's all the world wants to know. Can your Jesus love me? Does he care about me? Does he think I matter? That's what the world wants to know. And we're so busy worried about things. Can you stop for one? Jesus, the operation of God. What happens? What happens when we can stop for one? What happens when we can come to a person with the worst reputation? People tell you not to, not to make contact with them. And here was Jesus stopping for Zacchaeus. The salvation that was spoken. The salvation that was spoken by the Lord and the Bible declares and was confirmed to us. How was it confirmed to us? Hebrews chapter 2 verse 4. It was confirmed with miracles, signs and wonders and diverse gifts of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. According to his own will. It was confirmed that way to us. He will confirm it to you. He will confirm the same to you. Hallelujah. When you get there, the operation of God is in full force. Oh my goodness, we are running out of time today. I wish I could just tell you some more. Tomorrow, I'm continuing on this part. You know, this, uh, the faith of the operation of God. For you to get a hold of this thing, that God is at work in you, but to will and to do of His good pleasure. Faith is the tangibility of God's living present power and purpose in you. And that is the substance of what the world wants to say. You don't have to be the most eloquent speaker. You don't have to be the richest man around. You don't have to be any of those things that people consider. You can just be love to somebody. You can just be a lifter to somebody. Just take your eyes off yourself. Look for somebody that is down and lift them. It could be the person that has been attacking you, saying nasty things about you. One phone call. Don't even bring the situation up. Just say, I love you. I just want you to know. Let the Holy Spirit start working in them. That worst enemy might become the best friend. Maybe, just maybe, reaching out, not like the world does, fighting back at people. Not as the world would want you to do. The world, the world wants revenge. They want anger. They want to attack people. But there's a higher way. The most excellent way is love. The full expression of God. It's so high, high beyond, far above what the world is doing. They think you're naive. You are a million miles away because you're operating at a higher dimension, far above principalities and powers. Raised up by the glory of the Father. That's why you can come to a place when everybody's fighting and everybody wants blood, a pound of flesh. Everybody wants an eye for an eye. I told you, it will leave the whole town blind. But you come in there with a different voice. It's the voice of love. And faith is a reality. Faith is never a problem when Jesus is the focus. Faith is never a problem when love is the motivation. Faith is never a problem when you care to reach out to a hurting person. They are people hurting. Can you reach out to them? Can you reach out to them? Hallelujah. 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 That's who we are. The rest of the things we are believing for is added to you. Faith does not look for things. Faith 
attracts things. Things are added to faith. Faith makes things tangible. The eye can become real. The heart can get healed. The hurt can be healed. Hallelujah. Do you understand what I'm talking about today? God is at work. He is at work in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasures. Do you understand what I'm talking about today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It makes everything real. Faith is never a problem. Believing. Believing. Believing becomes your gift back to God. The greatest joy you can give him is to believe him. Yes, Lord. Let it be done to me according to thy word. Salvation has come. My God, can I tell you, I don't know whether you can handle this the rest of the week. I don't know. You tell me if you can handle it. Hallelujah. Can you handle this good news? Zacchaeus, he said, if I have ever defrauded anyone, I will pay four times. I will pay four times. The man never said, I defrauded others. Read your Bible. He said, if I've ever wronged anyone, I will, I will make it right. Jesus did not talk about his sins. Jesus didn't tell him to make it right. He just received salvation. He received love. The witch doctors in Africa, I didn't, I didn't say anything to them about, oh, you're a witch doctor. You need to give up your things. The witch doctors in Mexico City, they were burning incense across, across the road. 30,000 people, and the place was full of the hurting people. And when the incense blew across the field, because they're trying to fight us, the pastor said, let's hold hands and pray. I said, no. I said to the pastors, I'm not going to pray about that. I said, they said, but can, can you smell the incense? I said, yes, I can. And it smells pretty good. They said, what do you mean? It's demonic. I said, it's not demonic. It's just incense. That's just incense. He said, but they're doing this. I said, do you know what power you have? You are so far above. Whatever they do cannot affect you. You are still moving forward. You, your faith can move mountains. What are you worried about? A few witch doctors. Let them stay there and do their thing. Because when you get the microphone, the gospel is still the power. They make the mistake of staying there when I came on. And they, they make the mistake of giving their ears to me. I just planted good seeds into those ears. And in about 15 minutes after I started speaking and I was announcing to them the good news, what God has made available to them today. And these witch doctors are looking and all of a sudden, people started running to the front. I never made an altar call. I just announced the wonders of love. And this men and women they started coming to the front and they came. There were about 50 of them, one after another. These witch doctors would come and then they would take their, their big coat and open it up and bring some of their charms and drop it on the floor and then on the, on the, on the ground. And then people would scream, Libre, Libre. And then another group would come. And they, it was just like that constantly, constantly. And then the people, the, the, the witch doctors would stand in front of me. They want to receive this beautiful life from heaven. This wonders from heaven. And they're standing in front. And then I said to the rest of the people, if you want to receive this life from heaven, come to the front. And the people run. And some people say, they don't understand. I said, no, they do. Look at them crying. They couldn't be crying if they, don't understood, if they didn't understand it. They don't have to understand it with their head. Their hearts can feel God. They can feel Jesus. And they run forward and they stand like babies. And something amazing begins to happen. These witch doctors all got born again, miracles that night. And you know what we did? All their charms, we put them in a big um, oil drums, the burn barrels, and burnt them all. And all their, their books, their witchcraft books, we brought in there the next day. And we burnt all of those things without condemning them 
they are precious. People are precious. Never you forget that. Everyone you meet, see Jesus in them and bring that Jesus out of them. It could be the guy. Now, some of you don't understand. I go to the hotels around the world. The people cleaning up the place. I talk to them. And they, some of them start crying. They said, nobody ever talks to us. I said, no, you matter. And some of them, I just begin to bless them. They begin to weep. Why? Because everyone deserves to be appreciated. Everyone deserves to be loved. Even the person that no one, nobody wants to deal with, the guy down the street that everyone thinks is crazy, sit down with them. You find out that one has God's purpose locked up in them, the great salvation that came to us and was spoken. And God confirmed that with miracles, signs, and wonders. And the diverse gift of the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you today, something beautiful is taking place in your heart. I pray, may God open and soften your heart to be able to see through his own eyes, to feel through his heart, not through your experiences, but through the heart of Jesus. We have a hurting world. Every day we are reaching out to people. We are blessing people around the world. I want to encourage you today. Maybe there's somebody that has hurt you, has done something so mean to you, and you feel that they ought to get a, a payback. Just call them up and love them then. In doing so, you can win them over. They might get mad at you. They might find things wrong with you. Don't lay a charge in those ones. Don't lay a charge in them. You are not the accuser of the brethren. The devil is. Your job is to love people. People might call you naive. You might get advice from people telling you, just cut them off. Just don't do that. Do it like Jesus. You win the whole world that way. Are you hearing me? That has been the secret of us going to Denmark, all those countries that we are told nothing could happen. And then we've opened the doors to other ministries to come there because the hearts of the people were opened by love. That was the key. When we came to Norway, when we came to Sweden, it was love that opened the hearts of the people. We were, they said all kinds of things about me. I didn't have to respond. Why? I know me. I know what I'm called to do, to minister love that heals people. That is our mission. And we do that because God's mighty energy is at work in us. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Hallelujah. 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 And Pastor Dennis, I love you so much. You know that, right? <laughs> oh, my goodness. We had so much fun. I can't wait to come and see you guys again. I love Uganda. I love you guys. You're doing a fine work there. And uh, the people there are absolutely amazing. I'm so glad you guys are family. Uh, you guys are doing a fantastic job. The world needs Jesus. Take the time to love on people. You're operating in the highest dimension of faith. Faith that worketh by love. I hope you got that today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love you, Sharon. <laughs> and um, Marie and Claudine, Sabrina, Pretty, Yvonne, Donna, all of you. I love all of you. Rekha, Daniel, God bless you. Hallelujah. I want to say, Pastor Dennis, thank you for joining me today. Um, tomorrow, I want to take you guys deep. I'm going to do a deep dive tomorrow. What am I going to do? I want to take you guys into a very, very deep place. What happened when Jesus was raised from the dead? What happened in heaven? What happened on earth? And what happened in hell? We want to see what the glory did. The faith of the operation of God. That faith that released that operation. It was like a military in, uh, operation. Those of you from, from Uganda, you remember the raid on Entebbe, you know, when the Israeli um, 
commandos came there. It was like a raid. This was the operation of God to make sure Jesus was raised. It was highest priority. Without his resurrection, we will be dead in our trespasses. So this operation could not fail. The operation of God could not fail. The faith that put that operation together, that operation could not fail because death left everybody and came on Jesus. Hebrews chapter 2, he tasted death for all men. All of death came and there was an operation in place to make sure that death was destroyed. Hallelujah. That's for tomorrow. You understand what was the operation? The faith of that operation. The faith that believed in that kind of operation. That can tell them, in three days I'm coming out and there is nothing you can do. Such a faith that the operation was even told the enemy and the force that was used to make sure nothing went wrong with the operation was God's glory himself. Coming into the operation, there was no opposition. Oh, come on. Let me give you a little insight into it. There was no opposition so much that when he was raised, I'm telling you, the guards that were, under, uh, they were standing there fell like dead men. The, the tombstone was rolled away. There was something so great that, okay, I got to stop. That's for tomorrow. That is for tomorrow. Are you hearing me? That is for tomorrow. I wanted to give you a little insight into it. That's for tomorrow. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? You can't miss tomorrow because something happened. Something happened. The operation of God. What happened in that operation? There was something that in the physical dimension, everything in the physical dimension pointed out there was an operation that the laws of physics, the law of medicine, Every man-made law was suspended for that operation to be successful. Can you imagine? Jesus wrapped up and bound. Okay, I'll stop right there. Are you hearing me? The faith of the operation of God. It was a, an operation that heaven could not, could not fail. The faith that put that operation in place is the same faith that God put in your spirit when you were born again and you cannot fail. Are you hearing me? Okay, that's for tomorrow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? It's an operation. If you understand what I can see, if you can see what I can see, the operation of God, the faith that made sure nothing went wrong with this operation, all the laws of science was suspended. The laws of nature was suspended. Everything was suspended. Satan, the Bible says, death could not keep him down. Death, that is the final enemy, could not keep Jesus down. Because there was a fight going on. It says it was impossible for him to be holden by death. Acts 2.24. There was something going on. Death left every man, came on Jesus to make sure he tested death for all. Every death that we had came on Jesus. Are you hearing me? Tomorrow. Hopefully we can get to that place. I want to give you an opportunity. Today is Transformation Tuesday. Share with others what you've learned. Share this, all this message today. Just click it and share it with others. Let them benefit from it. Let's not keep the good stuff to ourselves, okay? Let's share with others. Let's be a blessing to others. And I want to thank you, those of you that have been supporting us, all of you that have been supporting us. I want you to do something. Hallelujah. You want to go to our website, christlove.org. We have a big project coming up. We have a big project coming up. I see Hilma, all of my Icelandic family. I love you guys so much. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Princess Reka, I love you. You stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's my daughter. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now, I want you to go do, so, do us a, uh, a big favor. Um, 
I want us to become investors in this ministry. You want to go immediately to Christlove.org. This has blessed you today. I want to say thank you for your support. Release a seat today. A seat today. A seat a day will keep poverty away. You know, daily, I'm looking for opportunities to be a blessing to people. And we always find it never ends. Opportunities pr pr present themselves to keep the flow, to be a blessing to people around the world. So I want to encourage you, go to Christlove.org. You can click the donate button. You're going to sow a seed today. Make it an uncommon seed. You want to get into that faith place to operate like God. The faith of the operation of God. The operation of God that brought Jesus back from the dead. Tomorrow, I'll talk about this whole week. We're talking about the operation that brought Jesus from the dead. What is that faith that can believe that the operation cannot fail? We'll be talking about this. You want to connect with this grace. You want to say, man of God, I believe in what he's saying. I want to experience the same. I just don't want to hear about salvation. I want to be that which I have heard. I want to become that. And you can become that by revelation. The more revelation you have, remember revelation is not static, it's dynamic. Daily, you begin to find out everything is changing in your world. I pray that this has helped you today. This has helped you today. And uh, if it's helped you today, go to Christlove.org, sow a seed. And we have other options. We want to give everybody an opportunity. Paul said, I know you have, you, you have a, a willing heart to do, but you lacked the opportunity. I want to present this to you. We have, you can go to PayPal, uh, the option, you can see that on your screen, paypal.me forward slash Charles and uh, we can We can do something beautiful to get the kingdom of God going forward. Amen. Can you imagine this message every day that comes out to people? People are being blessed by it, like you're being blessed. Let's make an investment in this ministry. And then we have other options. Um, we have the cash app option. You can check that out. It's right there. It has the dollar sign and then the, the, my name, Charles and Diffon, just one word. All of it, one, one, just one word. And I believe we have another option. We have those that they can do money order or you can do your checks. You can send it to, to uh, Christ Love Media, P.O. Box 72800, Providence, Rhode Island, 02907. And if you want to do Western Union and things like that, just inbox all the detail. I, I believe that staff will be able to do that. And I pray for you that the same grace, the same grace, the same revelation that has been here, it is imparted into your spirit. The same love that has been in this place be imparted into your spirit. May you always become all that God had in mind for you to be. The living expression of love. God bless you and I will see you guys again tomorrow. Thank you for watching. God bless God you. Bless God, you. Bless God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.